I live in a small suburb, a little ways outside of a major city. There's really not much else to say about it other than that. There are hundreds of other suburbs just like it in the area, and I can tell you for certain that there's nothing particularly interesting about this place that warrants a visit. It's simply a textbook example of urban sprawl. A place where people live and nothing more. There's only one thing about my neighborhood that I ever found remotely interesting, and that was the old man with the flowers. There was an empty lot on my street just across from my house. There apparently used to be a house there about 30 years ago, but it was demolished for some reason or another, and since then the land has sat undeveloped. It was largely unclear who, if anyone, owned that land. As far as anyone I ever talked to about it could remember, no one's ever seen a for sale sign posted somewhere on the property, anything that might indicate that someone intended to do something with it. It was certainly odd, to say the least. Our neighborhood was far from popular, but any land this close to the city was still prime real estate. It didn't make sense for the plot to sit so untouched for so long. Though to be clear, it wasn't like the land went completely untouched. At least once a week, sometimes even more often, an old man would show up at the empty lot. He'd pull up to the curb in his old but well-maintained truck and start unloading his gardening supplies such as trowels, cultivators, a hoe, even a bag of what appeared to be homemade fertilizer. Once he was unloaded, he sat around planting usually one or several pots of flowers that he brought with him. Usually they were pre-grown, but sometimes he plant bulbs and seedlings as well. Under his care, what should have been an empty, overgrown plot was instead a vast field of flowers. No one who currently lives here, as far as I know, has been here long enough to know how long the old man's been gardening there. My parents told me that when they moved into our house about 15 years ago, around that time I was due to be born, the man, who was old even back then, had long started his project and had already filled the empty lot about halfway. Everyone just sort of assumed that he owned the plot, but even if he didn't, it didn't really matter to the residents here. If not for the old man, the lot would have simply been an annoying eyesore. As it was, though, it actually maybe even raised the value of their homes simply by being near it. The picturesque garden was hardly the sort of thing someone might complain about. Ever since I was old enough to really take notice of the old man, I, I found him rather intriguing. He didn't seem to live anywhere near the area, so why bother coming at all this way in just a garden? Did he perhaps used to live there? Or maybe even know who lived there? It seemed likely that he might have some sort of connection to the land. About a year ago, I finally worked up the nerve to talk to him. People in the neighborhood generally seemed to follow an unspoken rule not to bother the man, as far as I could remember, I didn't think I'd ever seen anyone else try to talk to or even approach him. Perhaps they worried that he might stop coming if they bothered him, or maybe there was some other reason I didn't understand at the time. I'm not quite sure. On the day that I decided to approach the man, I found him in the midst of planting what I believed to be marigolds. Noticing my approach, the old man stood and turned to face me. His movements were sure and steady. It seemed to carry little to no trace of his rather advanced age. I admittedly had never gotten a close look at him before, so I took a brief moment to give him a once-over. If I were to describe the overall impression I got from him in one word, I would say he seemed kindly. The knees of his overalls were stained slightly with dirt and grass, but his appearance, other than that, was rather clean and neat. I had half expected him to be annoyed by my interruption. However, upon seeing me, the old man's deeply wrinkled face crinkled up into a wide, cheery grin. And the vast majority of my worries melted away. We exchanged the usual polite greetings. He didn't bother to introduce himself, and neither did I. While this was the first time we'd spoken, it wasn't like it was the first time we'd seen each other. I did live right across the street from his garden, after all. After that, the conversation lulled, and I realized he was waiting for me to say what I'd come to say. Still somewhat nervous, I opted to cut right to the chase. Sorry to bother you, sir, I said, 
But I wanted to ask, why do you plant all these flowers here? Well, son, the man paused, seemingly deciding how to best answer. It's to remember them by. The man smiled once more, his grin carrying a slight hint of sadness before he turned away from me and returned to his work. His response only raised more questions in my mind, but I, I left them unspoken and returned to my house feeling regretful. I wondered if I had asked something I shouldn't have. Part of me worried that he might not show up again, but in spite of my worries, he was there the next week just the same. Not too long after that, I ended up developing an interest in photography. I would often find myself traveling to the city to take snapshots of the expensive cityscape, and other times I would travel outside the city limits to explore and photograph the majestic vistas of nature. If you can't guess from my melodrama, I'm really into it. However, my favorite subject was always the old man. I found something about his solitary figure working diligently amongst the slowly changing landscape of the flowers around him distinctly peaceful. I even entertained thoughts of compiling my pictures into a photo book or something like that. I felt a bit guilty about taking them without his permission. However, I figured the old man likely wouldn't mind. Though I had no real evidence for that conclusion other than the vague impressions I had of him from the one and only time we ever spoke. In any case, I doubted that it would ever become an issue, as the pictures were just for myself. That all changed about a week ago now. It happened suddenly when one day a bunch of workers showed up at the empty lot with a bulldozer, a backhoe, and a bunch of other equipment. It would seem that perhaps the old man had, in fact, not been the landowner or anything like that. We wouldn't learn this till later, but it would seem that the plot of land had simply been in a sort of administrative limbo for all those years. The people over at the city zoning commission were barely aware that the plot even existed, let alone the fact that it was unowned, until they happened to get an email from an interested buyer and ended up doing some digging. It was in the middle of a work day when the construction workers showed up. So hardly any of the residents were home to see what was going on. Those that were looked on in sad silence from their porches. I happened to be home from school that day, so I was there for the whole thing. I wanted to do something to stop what was happening, but what could I do? It wasn't my property, most definitely not my place to intervene, not that trying to get involved would do any good. I simply looked on in reluctant silence as the heavy machinery broke ground, tearing dozens of the flowers up by the roots. A few minutes passed before anyone noticed that something was wrong. I was turning away from the window in order to go distract myself with something else when I started hearing yelling from outside and the roar of the machinery was suddenly cut off. I hurried back over to the window to see what was going on. The workers were all crowded around the place where they had started digging. They were in the way, so it took me a moment to figure out what they were looking at. Eventually, though, I realized that there was something in the overturned soil. Something white. I hesitated. I hastily snatched up my camera, which luckily already had an appropriate lens attached for this sort of thing, and used the zoom function to try and get a better look. It took me a bit, but once I got the image to focus... I could finally make out what was in the soil. Bones. The next day, the police were making the rounds in the neighborhood, taking statements, trying to get a good description of the old man. They'd been able to do some preliminary testing on the remains, and the results were far from pleasant. All the remains they had recovered so far were definitely human though none of them formed a full body. They were just bits and pieces. They'd been able to positively ID a couple of the remains, too. The oldest one at that point was from a cold case from over a decade ago, whereas the newest, only somewhat decayed hand, was from a seemingly random murder that had occurred in the city only a week prior. 
it's still too early to say for sure, but, but they were unidentified remains that seemed like they could have been even older. It's still hard to say how long this had been going on. I was flipping through my photos of the old man, hoping to find a clear shot of his face that might aid the police in their investigation. The images that used to give me so much enjoyment now only made me feel sick. I resolved to destroy every single one of them, once I was certain they would no longer be of use. While doing so, I found my thoughts wandering a bit. I shuddered, thinking of the old sacks of what I assumed to be homemade fertilizer at the time. I suppose, in a way, I was sort of right. I finally found a snapshot that I thought might work, one that I had only taken about a month ago. I looked a little closer. I took a closer look, trying to determine its usefulness, but in doing so, I noticed something that I had overlooked back when I had taken the photo. Something that sent a chill to the very core of my being. The old man wasn't simply looking vaguely in the direction of the camera like I previously thought. He was looking directly at me. His face was stretched into a wide, toothy grin, but that smile carried nothing in the way of the warmth I'd seen in his expression before. Rather, it unsettled me so deeply that, that I could almost feel a knife sinking into my gut. I didn't end up giving the photo to the police. It, it seems like a bad idea, though to be honest, not giving to them seemed like just as bad of an idea. It's nighttime now. I'm up in my bedroom writing this all down before something happens, and if anything does end up happening, I keep glancing out the window and seeing movement that isn't there, really. Hearing things that I'm not sure if they're real or if I'm just imagining them. One time I thought I, I might have seen the old man for a second just before losing track of him. I really hope that I'm just freaking myself out. You know, even more over nothing. I haven't talked to my parents. Or anyone else since any of this. I'm not sure if I will, I just... I just don't know what to do. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's podcast. You can find Mr. Creepypasta Storytime on any kind of podcasting platform if you're watching on YouTube, and if you're listening to the podcast already, you can find Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube. <laughs> for those of you that are interested in seeing me do more than just tell scary stories, you can also check me out at twitch.tv slash Mr. Creepypasta. During the weekdays around 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, I usually stream video games, and sometimes they're Resident Evil, and sometimes they're not. I'm also on Patreon. You can find a whole bunch of other people supporting on Patreon in the description down below, but there is a very, very special thank you to these people in particular. Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Creepypasta Adam, Ken Lando Higuchi, Mazakin, Champinsky, The Red Oak Shield Virus, G Weevil 3, Diana Krause, Steven Van Huss, Chance Burton, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Barbara Maceo, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, S-Man, Kirisuba, Bad Honey, Someone You Love, Said The King 56, Somber Puppet, Wolfie Numbs, Shadow Morningstar, Sean Mills, Jesse Gonzalez, Mad Marstomp, Z Kearley, Cassie Core, Mr. Thud, and Patrick Schoolmeister. These guys are the real MVPs, and all of you who are listening are also the real MVPs. Stay safe, everyone, and sweet dreams. <laughs>